Assalamu alaikum, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa halul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Dear students, I am happy to meet you in another session. We're going to learn amazing things, inshallah. Before we move to the next lesson, I want you to recall what we learned in the last lesson. It was the creation plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the story of Adam and Hawa was the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us what he wants from us as a creation plan, meaning we see the life on a whole, a bigger purpose of life, inshallah. So the lessons I hope we have learned are the importance of knowledge and how important it is to preserve or take care of our intellect or aql. So the light of knowledge can shine on it. Then we learned about arrogance, kibir, gurur, takabur. What is the definition of arrogance? We have to know. And it was simply to reject the truth and look down upon others. Then we talked about uh, the state of the shaitan. Why did he become shaitan? Uh, first of all, it was his arrogance that I am better than Adam alayhi salam. There was no evidence to it. Allah did not say that. He just thought of it. So we have to control what goes on in our mind. Then he got envious or jealous or hasad that why Allah gave him that honor and not me. Again, you know, questioning Allah's masliha, maslihat, Allah's wisdom is going to be very, very counterproductive and harmful for us. Uh, then, uh, of course, the uh, shaitan became shaitan because he showed, he showed no remorse or uh, he tried to blame Allah for his own mistake of not obeying Allah. And then we talked about how, what was the reason Adam alayhi salam, in spite of everything going well for him, got into the trap of the shaitan, vain desires, right? Khahishat e nafs, nafs ki khahishat. So apni, then we have to look inside our own hearts that what are my desires? Are they vain or are they productive desires? So the best way to gauge our own desires and thought process is through the Quran and Sunnah. Then we talked about modesty. Modesty is very important and in incumbent on both men and women. And then um, the devil is an open enemy and there is no secret or no doubt. Quran tells us everything plain and uh, simple. So we have the power of choice to choose the path of Allah or to choose the path of the shaitan, inshallah. So my dear children, before we move on to the next lesson, I want to show you something that uh, I've been doing with my students who come like in person, of course. So this is a simple um, thing that I did with them. This is a flamingo, it's a bird like thing, right? He likes to stand on one leg. And it says here, stand tall, stand out. Stand tall, stand out. So I take all these things in the spiritual sense because we are here trying to build our own character and understanding uh, of the Quran and Sunnah for the purpose of Tarbiyah. So I would like to show you this, what I mean by stand tall and big. This is a stack of books that I just put together for you guys to understand what I'm trying to say. It is basically stand tall in character sense. I'm talking in the sense of a character. When we stand tall, we have to have a strong base to stand on. So look at these books, I've placed the most strongest one in my base. And then we build on like this. So this is our character that we build. And this thing is standing tall on it, right? 
So he's standing tall. Tall does not mean he's physically tall in height. He's tall and strong in character, his beliefs, his religion, his morals, his education. And this is just a typical example of who Adam alayhi salam Allah wanted to be. Uh, and the Bani Adam, we, the uh, children of Adam alayhi salam. So we stand on the basis of our knowledge, good characters, morals, rights, and responsibilities and stand out. Stand out, meaning you look different from the crowd. That is very, very important, my dear children, because if we try to please the crowd, we may lose our own selves. So inshallah, this type of character building, one brick at a time, just say, you know, the first brick in this strong base is the story of Adam alayhi salam. Keep your bricks strong. Hold on to them. Once you have learned, don't go back. Meaning, I forgot. And you know what? Just internalize. Think hard and deep about all these things that we have talked about and make them a strong um, brick of your stand, inshallah. This is what's going to happen. And when does this happen? Inshallah, we will talk about in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. These things don't uh, happen overnight. Okay. So inshallah, I hope uh, you are looking forward to stand tall and stand out. Let's start the story of Yusuf alayhi salam and just take a few seconds to purify our intention. Intention is extremely important. All right, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, story of Yusuf alayhi salam is called Ahsan al-Qasas, the best of narrations or the best of stories. That's how Allah addresses it. So there must be something very special about it. One thing that we know uh, from the hadith is that it was revealed in one sitting. And then, mashallah, this is one of the most beautiful stories. I will summarize it for you, and then you will realize what I mean. And surely it's a sign of Allah that how beautifully this has been put together. All right, so let's begin. Uh, Surah Yusuf 12, uh, Surah number 12, and Ayahs 1 to 3. Alif ma lam mim ra. These are the verses of the clear book. Kitab al Mubin, clear book. Quran is a clear book. We have revealed it in Arabic that you may understand. This is for Rasulullah, and then mashallah, we as Muslims also make every effort to learn as much Arabic as we can because the beauty of that conversation between Allah and the Prophet, and of course, addressing us as the believers, lies in understanding Arabic. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we narrate to you the most beautiful of stories. And you will definitely find out by the time we uh, summarize and end how beautiful this is. I'm just going to give you a clue that a person from the day they are born till their death, right? There's a lot going on in the middle. Some things we see as good, some things we see as bad. But in Allah's plan of events, Everything has a meaning and a place. So inshallah, I hope we can open our minds and look at uh, the stories of successful people who have walked in the way of Rasulullah and his footsteps, the Ambiya and the companions, how their lives were. Some good, some bad, but it keeps going until inshallah, one day the end is, the end of the story is very beautiful. This is what we're going to see here. So, uh, Surah Yusuf, uh, Ayah 4 to 6. When Joseph, Yusuf salam, said to his father, Oh, my father, I saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrating to me. His father said, Oh, my son, do not relate your dreams to your brothers, lest they devise against you. So what is happening here, my dear children? That um, Yusuf alayhi salam's father was Yaqub alayhi salam. And we know that Yaqub alayhi salam had 12 children, 12 sons. And Yusuf alayhi salam and his brother Binyamin or Benjamin were the youngest of them. 
Yusuf alayhi salam one day says, oh my father, look at the way they speak to each other. Oh my father, right? And inshallah, I hope we will learn from this, how we speak to our own parents in a loving way. And of course, it is necessary for the parents also to, to speak to their children in a kind and loving way. He says, I saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon prostrating to me. So this is a dream. And look at the reply of Yaqub alayhi salam. He said, my son, again, right, in a beautiful way, do not tell this dream to your brothers. They may try to harm you because of jealousy. So over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is narrating this in a beautiful way. So please remember Allah is going to narrate only the things that are very, very important, pertinent for us to learn. And rest of the things here and there don't matter. For example, uh, it does not say that Yusuf alayhi salam's father attempted to interpret the dream. He did not try to tell him the khab ki tabir, right? He just said this dream is important. And uh, of course, he was a prophet himself. So he said, don't tell it to your brothers. That was more important information. Now, what do we learn for our own selves? That when you or I or anyone, mashallah, when we see a dream, then first of all, our heart should be free of vain desires, right? You're like hoping for some nonsense stuff and that comes in your dream and you think that's true. It does not happen like that. For your dreams to be true, you need to be of a good and a sound heart and moral character, right? So dreams are for one own self, person's own self. And these are the true dreams. They may be that Allah is trying to guide you towards something, but that does not mean that I wake up the other day and tell everybody I have seen this dream, so I am superior to you. Allah is asking me to do this and this and try to uh, you know, make people do some things. This is not for us. Prophets are no more coming in this world. We know that. So my dreams are for my own self. And you just sit and wait. Subhanallah. Let's see what Allah has in store for you. So the second thing is that he talked to his father. We have to talk to somebody we trust. We can't just go and announce our dreams to people and especially not to people who are uh, not related to us. How do you know that person is of a really good character and he can guide you or she can guide you? So if, if you're lucky, you will find somebody knowledgeable who can guide you. If not, just subhanAllah, just stay patient. Allah will make things happen for you your, themself, himself, subhanAllah. Okay, so also remember that this dream that he saw as a child, it came true when he was quite old. That's why I'm saying exercise patience and good morals. Allah knows where to take you. There is no like hastening to find out what this means and what should I do and subhanAllah. Okay, guys, please, inshallah. Okay. All right. So this was about Yusuf alayhi salam's dream. And then the next thing is about Yusuf alayhi salam and his brothers. Anyway, mm, uh, so many siblings at home, jealousy in some siblings, we will not play the blame game, right? Blaming the uh, brothers, what they did or what happened, because we do not know when there are so many children in the house, what were the dynamics, what was the uh, situation of their money, maybe uh, like there were some favors that were given more to you. So that's why they got jealous or his um, a father who was a prophet, he knew that this is a special child who has a, a prophethood in his um, future. Subhanallah, let's leave the family dynamics. My and your job is to learn from this surah and not to go into the details of those. And keep this story, Ahsanul Qasas, meaning the best of narrations that mashallah we can use for our own betterment. Anyway, Yusuf alayhi salam and his brothers, um, uh, the brother said that um, our father loves Yusuf more than us. So let's try to get rid of him so we can have all the love of my father. That jealousy, and of course, it's not a th good thing. Jealousy is a disease of the heart, spiritual heart. And um, when people practice jealousy, it becomes a full-blown disease and it is very, very harmful. Uh, inshallah, Allah protect us from jealousy. 
And then these uh, brothers took uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, uh, promising that we will take care of him. We will, uh, you know, just let him play, and you know he can have a good time with us. But of course, they had another plan. They uh, threw him in a well, and then uh, took his shirt, put some blood on it, and told his father, their father, that the wolf ate him. Okay. Now the important thing is what was the reaction of the father in this time of grief, grief and loss. So the father said, your evil souls have tempted, to, tempted you to do something, but good is patience. It is Allah alone whose help can be sought from what you are describing. So at this point, dear children, please realize Ibrahim alayhi salam chose patience. Why? Because these are the circumstances when he had no control over the situation, right? He's not living in a city where he could call the police or file a report or do things like that to find Yusuf. And it was just, he, he said, whatever these people are saying that he's dead, he said, I do not know, looks like you did something evil. And then he did sabr. So sabr is for um, times when you have no other alternative. But inshallah, if you have an alternative, please go and try to um, like uh, make things better, inshallah. Don't just sit there and okay, patience, just so you don't have to work hard to um, make something right. In this case, this is the case of a prophet. He may be knowing a lot more than ordinary people like us. He chose patience. Okay. And he did not uh, like do like revenge plotting and all those kind of things. Inshallah, please remember. Uh, acting the right way in the right situations. So uh, we know that after that, Yusuf alayhi salam goes to Egypt. And then please keep realizing that this is an Allah's plan, right? Taken away from his father's affection, then thrown into a well by his brothers. And now he is taken from the well, sold as a slave in Egypt. And the Aziz Misr, the governor, he um, buys him and treats him honorably. He said that, you know, it may be that if this boy is useful to us, we may take him as a son. <clears throat> All right, so Allah put him in a nice home. Alhamdulillah, in, in good care. And when, now this is very important. So this now Yusuf alayhi salam is growing up and Quran says, and when he attained his maturity, we gave him wisdom and knowledge. And thus we do reward those who do right. Guys, this is a beautiful ayah we take heed from that maturity, meaning um, maturity in age is important We keep doing the right stuff until we get mature. And of course, after mature, but it says maturity, wisdom, and knowledge. These are the three things we all need. So please, this is the reward for those who do right. Now, again, self-introspection, look at our own selves. We have to keep doing right. So when we attain maturity, we have wisdom and knowledge. Inshallah, I found this very profound and, uh, like it's again telling us that all these things are a slow process, inshallah. Don't expect that, you know, Google can give you all knowledge or one day you study, uh, one year you study and you will be the knowledgeable and the wise, okay? These things have to be um, grown over time, like right, right, every brick counts, okay? Until you can stand tall on there. And inshallah, we have to be patient through that process. Also, my own notes that I thought is that it is actually also a gauge that if as you're maturing, are you gaining knowledge? Are you becoming wise? Okay. So this is also a gauge, you know, with age and maturity, you should be going in the right direction. You and I both in the right direction, inshallah. Okay. Now, um, the other section is Yusuf alayhi salam and seduction. So this is about the lady 
um, and the and Yusuf alayhi salam. Seduction means that she tried to um, you know make him do stuff that is not right, uh, going in the wrong direction in 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 terms of haram relationships. So now listen to this very carefully because if Quran can mention it in a very dignified way, what I mean, Quran ne bahut izzat aur tamiz ke saath isko mention kiya hai. So we should not be letting ourselves and our mind go in the wrong type of uh, direction, meaning making fun of it or calling bad names or uh, you know like abusing anybody. Take it as it is so you can enjoy the beauty of this uh, Sanul Qasas. So what happens is now that Yusuf alayhi salam grows up, he is a handsome young man. And of course, subhanAllah, he's mature, wise, knowledgeable that adds to his beauty. So this lady who is the wife of aziz -e misr she calls him one day, closes the door, and she wants to do like illegal relationships, right? Bad stuff with him. And she moved, this is what I'm reading from the Quranic translation. Uh, and she moved towards him and he would have moved towards her had he not seen the sign from his Lord. This is extremely important, my dear children. Uh, we are humans and we have learned before that humans have instincts, right? Instincts mean we have certain things that have been put into us and we have to use them or direct them in the right direction. Now this, um, Yusuf alayhi, uh, uh, the lady was attracted to Yusuf and Yusuf alayhi salam, for a moment or a less than a moment, he looked at her and subhanallah, he said he, said he could have been tempted, that Yusuf alayhi salam could have been tempted to take her offer, but then, he saw a sign from his Lord. Like Yusuf alayhi salam used to have visions, right? Allah would show him things. So whatever Allah showed him, he was in the correct intention and presence of mind. That he saw a sign and then he moved back and said, I seek Allah's refuge. Okay? This is what we're supposed to do. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the humanness of Yusuf alayhi salam also. He could have been tempted, but he made a conscious decision to move back. This is called mind over emotions. Thinking is here. Emotions are all over in our hearts if our hearts are not clean. So it is mind over emotions. If we have emotions overflowing, and you can check one of my uh, presentations that I have done on emotions. Emotions is something that we need to control. Emotions do not need to control us. If they control us, we will be flown away. People of intellect and who are God-fearing, they need to have their intellect engaged at all times. So mind over emotions, his mind came back, whatever he saw as a sign from Allah, and of course, we have sign our inner self also tells us what is right and wrong. So Alhamdulillah, he was saved. So this is for all of us, any age, any gender, it does not matter. Because please understand that uh, we have these kind of instincts inside us, but we also have guidance from Allah, how to navigate through them, how do we go about them? All right, so no blaming that, you know, uh, Astaghfirullah in uh, Christian tradition, uh, people blame Hawa for uh, letting Adam alayhi salam eat the fruit and go wrong. Over here, it's very easy to blame the woman for doing this to you. So, but the thing is, it, it's an equal, like, you know what? It, this is an equal, like, you know, it takes two to, yeah, tali do haaton se bachti hai, two to tango. English mein, it takes two to tango and tali do haat se bachti hai. So please, just be wise, no blaming, just protect yourself and don't put yourself in uh, situations that are wrong and tempting. Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> so now to just summarize a little bit because it's a long story. What happened in the middle, in, in between all of this is that uh, the 
uh, husband of this lady, he finds out that the lady was wrong because Yusuf alayhi salam's shirt was torn from the back and she was chasing him and trying to pull him. And uh, this lady uh, just insists that no, he was wrong and the, uh, the husband knew, but anyway, Yusuf alayhi salam uh, felt in danger that these women are after me. So he chose to go to jail rather than listen to these women. So this is very, very important, my dear children. You have to realize what is he trying to protect here? His name, his honor, his sadaqat, his honesty, his sachai is extremely important to uh, protect for himself. This is the way it should be for each one of us. Okay. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was al-sadiq al-ameen, the truthful and the trustworthy. Excuse me. So, truthful and trustworthy. So same thing, truthfulness is extremely important. And I will also touch again upon this uh, point at the end of it. All right, so uh, Yusuf alayhi salam is in jail and it takes him a long time before he got out of the jail, okay? So just imagine that life um, can, like they, they, they can be, <clears throat> Okay, so I had to pause. Um, my husband was calling from Pakistan. He needed some code. So I had to look that up for him. Anyway, let's resume. Uh, we were talking about um, the uh, that Yusuf alayhi salam had to spend a long time in the jail, right? Sometimes life puts you in a dormant kind of situation when you're not able to do a lot, but at the same time, uh, Allah has a plan for people. So inshallah, uh, what happened is that um, the in the jail, uh, there were two of his companions, and they said we see we saw a dream, and he's asked uh, Yusuf alayhi salam about the dream. It was about the um, uh, the birds. Okay, let me read that to you. Oh, fellow prisoners, as one of you uh, who was pouring wine for his master, he will be uh, going to serve the king, and the other one. He shall be crucified and the birds shall eat from his head. So these are the two companions. And these companions ask um, Yusuf alayhi salam for the interpretation of whatever their dream was because they, uh, they said to him, we see you are of the righteous. Sorry, Urdu ka lafz kya hota hai? character That's an English word. Anyway, so um, ka matlab hai ke we should ask the righteous or knowledgeable people anyways about our dreams and if we want knowledge, right? We have to ask people who are knowledgeable, not just guesswork and um, lies. Anyway, so Yusuf alayhi salam uh, told him, told them, and this is again extremely important for character building. Uh, this is what Allah has taught me. Because I believe in him, I do not associate any partners with him. And I follow the way of my noble fathers, Yaqub, Ishaq, and Ibrahim. Again, my dear children, character building, this is what Allah has taught me. All knowledge comes from Allah. He's not proud of boasting about it. Allah taught me because I believe in him. We have to also make our belief strong in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not associate any partners with him. This is extremely important. There are no partners with Allah in his power, in his might, in his creation, in his ibadah. No partners. We have to purify our deen for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow in the way of noble fathers. And of course, we know that this prophethood has culminated on our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So guys, this is the formula that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides you and teaches you a lot more if you believe in him, be truthful, follow the footsteps of our noble prophet. That's the promise of Allah. There is no shortcut to it and there is no other way because Allah has um, told us about two groups, right? Uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, the Surah uh, 
Fatiha has two groups in it, you know, the people who Allah bestowed their uh, uh, pleasure on them and the people who were not liked by Allah. So, uh, and then it says that Yusuf salam remained in the prison, prison for several more years. Uh, sounds sad, but the thing is that Allah has his own time of doing things and we must trust this, okay? Inshallah, have patience and a connection with Allah. Extremely important. Okay, so now after so many years, and some people say that uh, it was between three and nine years that Yusuf salam got out of the jail, and um, the king, he asked for the interpretation of his dreams, where he saw that seven fat cows were eating seven lean or skinny cows. So one of the people of the prison, he said, oh, I know there's somebody, Yusuf, in the prison who interprets dream. Allah has given him that power. He said, oh yeah, please bring him here. So when Yusuf salam comes to the king's court, listen to this, Quran says, let me tell you the ayah, uh, Surah Yusuf 46 to 49. So beautiful. He said, oh, truthful Yusuf. And the word in English is, uh, Sadiqu, beautiful. Oh, truthful Joseph, tell me the interpretation of this dream. Now, you know what? I have to take a pause and tell you here. This is what his reputation, his character, his moral, his connection with Allah, Yusuf salam, was protecting. And mashallah, he got it, right? So uh, this is the honor being Sadiq. We know about Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. We know this uh, Siddiqeen, Shahada and Siddiqeen, Ambiya, right? These are people of high ranks. They say Siddiq is only one rank below the prophethood. So um, subhanallah, his honor was protected. And of course, he worked very hard, right? He did not take away, take some worldly temptation of money or being with that uh, lady in a wrongful way and getting whatever he needed. He protected his reputation, his integrity, his dunya and akhira. And in the end, he is known as a truthful person amongst the people. And what do you think about Allah and his angels, right? Inshallah, inshallah. So my dear children, again, um, it is very important. We do not compromise on our morals. We always keep our intellect engaged. Don't throw away your intellect. Uh, this is knowledge that comes from the Quran and the Sunnah and of course um, from whatever you deduce or you uh, see from the environment, how things work in Allah's creation. And uh, that's how we keep going. Don't expect miraculous results because Allah Ta'ala has a, a time period where he trains us also. Okay, So inshallah be patient, uh, but uh, be extremely uh, careful what choices you make. Do not fall for vain desires. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of caretakers. In the end, I'm going to narrate the dua of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. Of course, the story did not finish, but I'm not trying to narrate the story here in a way of uh, storytelling. I'm trying to take the most pertinent points that are important for character building. And of course, there is more to the story. He forgave his brothers rather than taking revenge and um, you know, talk, telling them that you did this to me, you did this to me, now you're here, subhanAllah. Because he had reached such a high point. Here, he was standing here. He's not gonna come down and tell them that this is what you did. MashaAllah, he was up there. Doesn't matter. When you see, when we, um, go from a high, uh, go on a high tower or an aeroplane ride, the breath, uh, the, sorry, the view is breathtaking. Wow, subhanAllah, right? So people who are on the top of their moral character development and closer to Allah, they don't come down to uh, these little petty issues to, you know, fight with people. Alhamdulillah. So the um, dua of uh, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam is, you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. 
you are my protector in this life and the hereafter. Let me die as a Muslim and unite me with the righteous. So this is the end of the beautiful narration. Asanul Qasas. I hope inshallah you will be able to appreciate uh, uh, his life in a bigger picture, his birth. Okay, let's, let's just go over it quickly. His birth, very loving home and father. It was like a good thing, according to us humans, okay? A very good thing. And then he goes into the well, thrown by his brother, very bad thing, according to us, okay? I'm just going to do the action of my hands now up and down. So, and then he uh, is thrown in a well and then he comes to Mesir. The lady tries to seduce him. And then uh, more down, he goes into the jail. More down, he stays there, there for about nine years. And then, mashallah, he comes out and he's Siddiq and the governor of Egypt. Everything in that story of up and down falls in the right place. So, inshallah, hope you will be able to um, keep this vision in mind, long-term vision, and um, build your character based on these beautiful stories that Allah has put us for us, inshallah. So, your homework and your um, uh, homework is thinking again about writing a summary of the story of Yusuf alayhi salam in a whole picture. And then you can just see what went wrong according to us humans, because we have little knowledge, right? What went wrong, what went good, but in the end, everything was a plan of Allah for him. So we need to trust that Allah has a plan for us, each one of us make your connection strong with Allah. So inshallah, please summarize the story of Yusuf alayhi salam and uh, your uh, conclusion should be that uh, how do I see my life in the story of, um, in the light of the story of Prophet Yusuf, what lessons have you learned, okay? So make a summary and write the lessons that are very powerful what you have learned inshallah and please remember no forgetting these things no, nobody wants to come down right inshallah i want you all to go higher and higher okay make this very very solid base for yourself jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum warahmatullah see you another time